Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. I'm in a chair this week, not really sure why, uh, but I dig it. It's, it's a cool chair. And uh, first, a quick apology for missing last week of TWC9. I got sick, and sadly, there is only one of me, and I promise not to make this a habit. Okay, enough about me. Let's get right into this week's dev news. First up, Microsoft Build is coming. Our annual developers conference will be taking place in sunny Seattle. Okay, it might not be sunny, but hopefully one day it will be, uh, at least once, um, from May 7th to 9th, uh, 2018, and tickets are still available, so be sure to get yours. I'll be there, your Channel 9 favorites will be there, and we want you there. And if you do attend and see me, please say hello, because I would love to meet anyone who watches our content. Next up, this week is the Big Game Developers Conference, also known as GDC, and it's taking place as I record this in San Francisco. And we've been streaming sessions and interviews on Channel 9 all week. Tons of stuff has come out of GDC, but I want to focus on just a couple of things. First up is the announcement of Microsoft DirectX Ray Tracing. Now, I'm not going to lie and pretend that I know exactly how this works, because I don't have a master's in computer science, and I'm not a 3D graphics expert. But I've been following ray tracing and the evolution of 3D graphics for a long enough time to know that this is a big deal. The TLDR from the announcement blog is that by allowing tra uh, traversal of 3D representation of the game world, DirectX ray tracing allows current rendering techniques, such as SSR, to naturally and efficiently fill in the gaps left by rasterization. And um, it opens the door to an entirely new class of techniques that have never been achieved uh, in a real-time game. So that's very, very cool. Now, this is part of DirectX 12, and viewers who don't know a lot about rasterization or ray tracing can read the blog post in the show notes and watch the demo videos from Epic, FutureMark, Seed, and EA for more details. Bottom line, as I said, this is a BFD, and as somebody who plays games but doesn't develop them, I'm super stoked because who doesn't want to have better 3D graphics? Next up in GDC adjacent news is the most recent episode of the Level Up show on Channel 9. And Katie Stone Perez, the director of Mixer, gives an awesome overview of Mixer for developers. Now, if you're not familiar with Mixer, uh, it's Microsoft's streaming platform largely, largely targeted at gamers. And so kind of think about it as Twitch, but sadly without random Drake appearances. A, a Drake? Please call me if you want to play any game on Mixer. I will be happy to. Also, you will always be Jimmy Brooks in my heart. Anyway, check out this great episode and learn more about how you can use Mixer as a dev. Also on Channel 9, Burke is joined by Sean Larkin for an episode of Five Things where they geek out over Webpack. Hey, Sean, how about getting me a Webpack t-shirt that I can wear on Channel 9? Thanks, bud. There's also a slew of Windows news this week. In fact, we could almost call this show Windows Weekly, but I think my friend Leo Laporte would sue me, and I like Lisa and Leo far too much for that to happen. In Windows news, we've got uh, the announcement of Windows Server 2019. It's in preview now and will ship later this year. This is part of our long-term service channel for Windows Server, and it's coming out with some great new features. For me, the biggest highlights are the new web interface, the integration with Windows Subsystem for Linux, and the broader container support. Windows insiders can download preview versions of Windows Server 2019 now. In other Windows news, there is a great new feature on the fast ring for Windows insiders for the next version of Windows 10, and that is HEIF support. HEIF is a new image format that offers high quality and lower file sizes. And it was introduced by Apple with the iPhone 10 and in iOS 11, and the latest version of macOS supports it too. And even though OneDrive has had support for HEIF for quite some time, Windows 10 hasn't, and that's going to change. So the Photos app in Windows 10 will support HEIF by default, and this is great. And in a final Windows 10 tidbit, Jeff Petty, the Windows Accessibility Program Lead, has outlined some of the accessibility changes coming to Windows 10 over the next year. I cared a lot about accessibility before I was hit by a car and temporarily lost use of my right hand, but after that experience, I care even more. So check out the blog post to see some of the changes coming, which include new ease of use settings, better narrator usability, and improved eye control navigation. In nerdy project news, Scott Hanselman details how to turn a Raspberry Pi 3 into a portable touchscreen tablet with SunFounder's RasPad. I'll also throw in a link in the show notes to a guide that I wrote about 15 months ago about how to turn a Raspberry Pi 3 into a retro gaming machine, because this stuff is always fun to do. 
For Visual Studio lovers, be sure to check out the latest preview releases. Visual Studio for Mac version 7.5 Preview 1 is out now, and Visual Studio 2017 version 15.7 Preview 2 is also available. And finally, it's time for my pick of the week. I usually try to do something random and nerdy, but this time I just wanted to give a shout out to my friends at Shifty Jelly, who have launched a beta version of their fantastic podcasting app, Pocket Casts, in the Microsoft Store. Now, I've been using Pocket Casts on and off for years on iOS and Android, and it's one of the best podcasting apps around. The Windows version is a treat, and it's not a free app, but you can get a free trial to figure out if you want to shell out the money. And let's be real, there aren't a lot of solid podcasting apps for Windows, let alone in the Microsoft Store, and this one will sync your progress and subscriptions across the mobile versions too. Also, support indie developers. Indie devs are what makes the world work. Well, that does it for me this week. Please like and subscribe on YouTube, and let me know your favorite podcasting client in the, show, in, in the comments. We'll see you next time.